Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Today, uh, something a bit unusual. Um, we've been asked in the past by viewers whether they could see us solving on paper because we always explain that solving on the computer, whichever um, app we're in, is a bit slower. So this time I've got a new gadget and uh, thanks to my children for that. And I'm going to try and show you a solve on paper of this week's Sunday Times, a very hard puzzle. They only publish them in the Sunday Times. They're meant to be tougher than fiendish. And uh, I'll talk you through my solve in real time as best I can. So here we go, starting now. And immediately I'm making Snyder notation marks about where the fives could go in the left cell there, and then where twos and threes could be in the top right. Now, where possible, as with that one in the right-hand side, um, I'll write the possibilities over boundary of the two cells. This useful tri triple of two, five, six in um, in row three there, which has helped resolve the uh, first few numbers that can actually go in cells in the grid. And then I'm just looking for other things now. Having solved this already, I know kind of the things I was missing. And at these points, like now, when nothing's going in, I'm basically just scanning the grid back and forth to try and find something that will help. Um, in the bottom left, it's quite interesting to see that um, column two in the bottom left box is quite constrained, and I haven't noticed that yet. So again, still just making notes of anything I see there. I've noticed it now. So eight five is a pair in that bottom left box, and that's really going to help with the numbers in the bottom left box. Three can now only go in that cell, as I've noticed. Nine and six um, complete that uh, box down there. So after that, again, you know that felt like a breakthrough at the time but it hasn't yielded all that much to uh, keep going on with and again just making notes about where some numbers i can see should go twos and there's something in the uh, ones in the bottom row of boxes that is very easy and i haven't noticed at all there i've just deviated from my normal notation for some reason in that box at the end of row six I've written six, eight in small letters as the only candidates for that. I don't know why, it just struck me as something that might be useful later. Um, but I am aware that I've deviated from the normal writing in all the cells in a box that a candidate number could go in and instead I put in actual candidates. There's the one that was obvious from the beginning. I've only just noticed it. Um, so obviously my time could have been better here if I'd spotted some of these things like the 8-5 pair and then that 1, 6 and 9 have to be in the central box in row 8 there. A 3 there on the boundary between two diagonal cells, although in fact from the 3s in the boxes above that, which have to be in columns 7 and 9, I've been able to work out where the 3 does go. Now that's helped put an 8 in in row 2. And I've noticed that in the second box, in the, in the top middle box, eight has to be in the top row there. But what I haven't noticed yet is that one can't be in that cell the, uh, in row two, unfortunately. That would have really helped and takes me a little while to notice that. But still some progress, quite useful pair of six, nine now must be in the top left. Um, and that's helping finish this box to some extent and again just thinking just trying to find something that's actually useful you know getting pretty close to having this one finished now I think now maybe I will notice yeah one must be in one of it must be in the top row that's fixed the nine that's sorted out the nine six now we can finish row two um, three and six somewhere in that top right box five and two and they are resolved by the five that was down here and that's helping us kind of get to the end of this puzzle now so not quite done but I think everything else from here on in is is reasonably straightforward obviously if you're interested in the detail of, of how the deductions are made stop the video and work it out but I don't think anything I haven't explained is is anything other than straightforward either by 
elimination of individual numbers or by elimination of rows and columns. So um, the rest of the work now in the central column of boxes, as I say, is just resolving from what we've already got in, which way round they must be, and certainly a lot of the uh, speed that I achieve is done by just scanning the grid very quickly at this point. So there we go, that's the puzzle completed. Just under five minutes, about four minutes 43 for the solve. You know, I'm quite pleased with that for a very hard puzzle. Um, certainly once the grade gets up towards very hard or uh, the New York Times Diabolical, I'm prepared to switch to a pencil and start guessing. I had one ready in case it was needed. This time it wasn't. That one was was done with pure logic. And uh, again, it will be quicker with logic if you can see the logic quickly. But on the other hand, if you had to look for X-wings and, uh, and uh, swordfishes and things like that, it might take a bit longer. So as long as it's you know, the, the triple at the top was clearly very helpful early on. I think that's not too hard to spot. Um, well, if I can spot it, it's not too hard to spot. And after that, there were just a few kind of elimination problems to figure out. Uh, the 8-5 pair in the bottom left was clearly very helpful. So that's how I went about that puzzle in real time on paper. hope that's interesting to those who've, who've asked to see a paper solve. And uh, I might try with with this little camera to do some others of those in the future. Particularly, I think this could be useful when we get to variant Sudoku puzzles, which are sometimes quite hard, given what they show in the grid, to for us to display with uh, Sudoku software. So thanks very much for watching. Um, do tell us if, if you enjoy seeing a paper solve like that in the comments, and, uh, and we'll do more of them if that's the case. And uh, Thanks again. Hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic, and bye for now.